Hello Cowboys Nation! Here we go for another round of Dallas Cowboys news for you. But first, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any news from your team. Cowboys LB Micah Parsons on Dan Quinn's future, he might take me with him, you never know. On Saturday, Super Wild Card Weekend will begin. However, the off-season signing cycle is already underway. One team dealing with both is the Dallas Cowboys, who will host the Green Bay Packers on Sunday, but also have a candidate for head coach, defensive coordinator Dan Quinn. One of Quinn's main pupils, Micah Parsons, isn't thrilled with the prospect of Quinn leaving, but understands that it's all part of being in the NFL. And maybe Quinn would even take Parsons with him. Dan's my guy, Parsons told reporters on Thursday. And if he leaves me, it's always out of love. He might take me with him, you never know. Parsons was laughing when he said the line and it's almost impossible that Cowboys owner Jerry Jones won't lock up his sponsor with an extension at some point in the near future. However, the comment emphasizes how much Parsons likes Quinn and could be a subtle joke in contract negotiations. The 2021 first-round pick has signed through 2024 on his rookie contract with a fifth-year option, and Jones has already emphasized the importance of an extension for Parsons this summer while dealing with resistance from guard Zach Martin. Losing Quinn, on the other hand, could be inevitable. NFL Network insider Ian Rappaport reported earlier this week that Quinn was a candidate to succeed Pete Carroll as head coach of the Seattle Seahawks. Quinn also received interview requests from the Carolina Panthers, Los Angeles Chargers, Tennessee Titans, and Washington Commanders. So when asked on Thursday if he thought this might be his last chance to win a Super Bowl with Quinn, Parsons answered in the affirmative. It's the nature of the business, Parsons said. It could be my last trip with Q. And if it is, let's make sure it's a very good one. Quinn, after six seasons as coach of the Atlanta Falcons, has been with the Dallas D.C. for three seasons. That covers Parsons' career so far, in which he has reached three Pro Bowls and become widely recognized as one of the NFL's elite players, regardless of position. Quinn has always been by his side, building a relationship that goes beyond coach and player. That's my UOG, really. He means a lot to me, not just because of, it's not just about football, Parsons said. I think Q, we were talking today and I was like, could you do the college thing? Because of, Nick, Saban, retiring, and all of them. And he said, yeah. And I thought, because you're a great mentor. I think he does a great job of finding ways for you to love the game, finding ways around the game. You don't always have to be uncompromising, I'm the coach. I think it's more of a friendship. We go through what I don't like and what I do like. He doesn't just treat me like a player, he treats me almost like a friend. He's always there when I need him and we're not afraid to have those difficult conversations, whether it's father to son or player to coach, we have them no matter what. Parsons could well have given Quinn a resounding reference in his comments on Thursday. Regardless, he still has at least one more game with Quinn on Sunday against the Packers and is fighting for at least four more. Cowboys star Micah Parsons' interesting take on Dan Quinn's exit speculation Dallas Cowboys defensive coordinator Dan Quinn has been in the headlines recently as Dallas prepares for its upcoming clash with the Green Bay Packers in the wild card round of the NFC playoffs. Quinn has been the architect of what has become one of the league's most consistent defenses since taking over as defensive coordinator in 2021, leading some to wonder if he might opt to leave the Cowboys for a head coaching opportunity elsewhere this offseason. Recently, Cowboys defensive star Micah Parsons spoke about the speculation and why his focus is on the present and not the future. It's the nature of the business, Parsons said, according to John Machota of The Athletic on X, a platform formerly known as Twitter. It could be my last trip with Q. And if it is, let's make sure it's a really good one. Dan's my guy. And if he leaves, it's always love. He might take me with him, you never know. Dan Quinn previously served as coach of the Atlanta Falcons, who reached the Super Bowl during the 2016-17 season and were the authors of the biggest collapse in the history of team sports when they got there. Still, there's no denying Quinn's talent as a defensive genius, dating back to his time with the Seattle Seahawks in the early 2010s. In any case, it seems that Micah Parsons is focused on making the most of Quinn's remaining time in Dallas.
Packers vs. Cowboys Preview, in numbers. After a staggering 2-5 start to the season, the Green Bay Packers returned to the playoffs behind their elite offense, led by first-year starter Jordan Love, to finish 9-8 and make the playoffs. The prize will be to face one of the best teams in the league, the Dallas Cowboys, minus 7. The biggest story of the season, and perhaps the only story that really matters in the long run, is that this passing offense is on fire. Throughout the second half of the season, Jordan Love ranked third in PFF passer rating, third in Dakota, third in EPA slash play and second in CPOE. He looks like a legitimate star as he plays with a cast of kids around him. That cast of kids has been quite impressive, especially the rookies. Dontavian Wicks adjusted YPRR of 2.13 ranks 22nd in the NFL and is plus 2.2 yards after reception above expectations per reception ranks 9th. Jaden Reed broke Sterling Sharp's rookie receptions record. Tucker Craft finished as one of the league's best tight ends by DVOA, and Bo Melton, in a small sample, was one of the league's most efficient receivers. That doesn't include second-round pick Luke Musgrave, who was perfectly cromulent before his kidney injury, or second-year wide receiver Romeo Dew or Christian Watson. This receiving core is full of options for love, and that has helped them manage the rotating injuries the group has had. The Packers' running game struggled early in the season, but in the last three weeks no one has run the ball more efficiently than the Packers. Aaron Jones is back healthy and the play of the offensive line has improved in the second half of the season. One area where the offensive line has rarely struggled is in pass protection, where the group has done a very solid job keeping Jordan Love clean. It's not hard to see why, in the second half of the season, only two offenses have been more efficient than Green Bay's. Unfortunately, one of them is Dallas. Unfortunately, one of them is Dallas, and they'll be up against a pretty weak Packers defense. Although the Packers' overall totals allowed don't look bad, they're helped by the slow pace at which the Packers' offense plays. By unit, they rank 22nd in points allowed. The pass defense, in particular, has been a problem for much of the season. There was a lot of improvement over the last two games from this unit, but that was against two reserve defenders and Justin Fields. The career days that allowed Bryce Young and Baker Mayfield are not distant memories. One area where Green Bay has struggled in the past is run defense, but in the second half of the season, Green Bay was almost average in EPA allowed per run and only slightly below average in run success rate allowed. Those are more than enough numbers to work with. The big concern this week will be the passing game. Green Bay will rely heavily on its defensive front generating pressure to slow down the Cowboys' passing game because the secondary simply doesn't have the talent to slow down a high-quality Cowboys offense that matches up very well with the Packers. Fortunately, there may be some opportunities for edge defenders to wreak havoc. If you've made it this far, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any news about your team. Thank you.